Welcome back. In this episode of Motion Magic, we're going to look at forced projection on a photograph. Shout out to Simon Ubsdell for the inspiration for this episode. I'm going to take this photograph here and drop it in a project. Hold down Shift and Option and scale it up so it fills the frame. And then I'm going to add a camera and switch to 3D. If I orbit the camera, we can see we have a simple flat photograph in 3D space. I'm going to make two clones of this by pressing the K key, select it plus K again. Then I'm going to right click and select the crop tool for this first clone layer. Hold down spacebar command and zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to crop this one down to just this section of the boardwalk right there. Then I'll select the upper clone layer and crop it up to everything but the boardwalk. So if I now turn off the bottom layer, which is just a reference, we now have two sections. There's the bottom and there's the top. If I orbit the camera, nothing has changed. I'll double click to reset the camera. Now I'm gonna select the bottom with the boardwalk, right click and select the anchor point tool and move the anchor point down to the bottom of my frame, right about there. Press Q for the adjust 3D transform tool, hold the shift key down and drag down on this X axis rotation handle to rotate this down exactly 90 degrees. If I now deselect it and orbit the camera, we can see it's laying flat like a floor. I'll double click to reset the camera. Now I'll select the same lower layer, shift Z to fit everything to the window, then drag up to scale it all the way up to touch back to the original top of the photograph. If I now orbit the camera, we can see we have two separate layers. I'll deselect everything so that we can orbit around the center point. And you can see we now have two separate layers. One is a floor stretched out. I'll double click to reset the camera. Now what I'll do is right click and choose the distort tool. What I want to do is map this back to the original dimensions. Hold the shift key down. So I'm only dragging directly left and move that over and then also move the right one over. I'm adding the shift key after I start to drag. Then I'll hold down command space bar and drag to move out a little bit and move these over as well. Again, using the shift key. Now you could be more exact in the inspector, but I'm doing this in under five minutes. Shift Z to fit it to the window, deselect everything. If I turn those off, there's our original and here's our new one. So we have our original photograph back, but if I orbit the camera, we actually have them separated in space and we have a floor. Finally, I'm going to take this top one, right click, choose the anchor point tool, set the anchor point at its base, press Q for the adjust 3D transform tool, and now I want to move it back in space. So I'm going to go to the right view using the compass, deselect everything and press F to frame the entire scene, select this top layer and move it back to the very back of our floor. Then I'll press F to frame it, zoom out a little bit, and move it down and position it right at the base of our floor. Then I'll go back to our active camera. And then in the inspector, for the scale, I'll scale this up and it will scale from its anchor point back to match again. And once again, we have our original image. However, if I now orbit the camera, we basically have a box, a little scene here. I'll double click to reset that. So if I dolly the camera, we can create a little camera move and it looks like we're actually in a little 3D scene here. I'll double click to reset that. So with the camera selected from the behavior shortcut menu, I'll select basic motion move, move forward about three seconds, O for an out point, and I'll move down a little bit and I'll move in. I'll also turn off my 3D grid. And very quickly, I've created a force projection look on a simple photograph. In our new Warp Speed Motion 3D tutorial, we take this a step further by adding 3D text to the scene, incorporating shadows with a directional light, and then creating a camera move that moves through the text. Click the subscribe button below. If you have an idea, comment, or suggestion, leave those below as well. Go to rippletraining.com for fast professional training on Final Cut Pro, Motion, and DaVinci Resolve from industry professionals.